a roller coaster of mass two kilograms is released from point A, which is 30 meters above the ground. We can see over here that they've said 30 meters and then the cart moves a friction along a frictionless surface. Only in grade 12 will we actually start adding friction for these kinds of questions. A, B, C as shown below. The first question says define the term gravitational potential energy. So before we give the definition, do we know the formula for potential energy? Well, potential energy on our formula sheet is M G H, where M stands for the mass, G on planet Earth would be 9.8, and H is height. So the definition is the energy of an object due to its position, or you could even say height, above the ground. Okay, this one. Prove with calculations that the mechanical energy, what is mechanical energy? Mechanical energy is, so remember, We've, okay, so in, in grade 10, and we're going to look at this again in grade 12. In grade 11, we don't really. But in grade 10 and grade 12, we're going to look at mechanical energy. So we've learned that mechanical energy, well, let's quickly talk about, we have two types of energy that we study in grade 10. One of them is energy due to height. And that's the one we just looked at. That is called potential energy. Okay, so we call that one, or I'll just say, potential energy, EP, energy potential. Then we get another type of energy in grade 10, which is energy due to how fast an object is moving. An object is moving. And that is called kinetic energy, kinetic energy. Now, if you take those two energies and you add them together, that is called mechanical. So it says prove with calculations that the mechanical energy at point A is 588. So is the object moving over there? Let's just see. The roller coaster is released from rest. Okay, so not moving. So that means, okay, so normally you would have to say that the mechanical energy is kinetic plus potential. But because the object is not moving, the kinetic energy will be zero because kinetic energy is a half mv squared. And if the v is zero, so we could even say that um, because we know that kinetic energy is a half mv squared and we know that potential energy is mgh. So we could say a half times the mass. What's the mass? Two. What's the velocity? Zero. Plus. What's the mass? Two. What's gravity? 9.8. What's the height? 30. You see, I'm just using this formula, and then for the kinetic energy, I used its formula, and for the potential energy, I used its formula. And so if you go work this out, you end up with 588 joules. Okay, now moving on to question 5.3. It says, state the law of conservation of mechanical energy. Now, let me first explain that. So we've said that in grade 10, we've got two types of energy. We've got potential, which is, you can think of it as due to the height, and then we've got kinetic, which is due to how fast. Okay, and then when you plus them together, when you plus them together, that gives you mechanical. So, when this object is over here, it most, we said that because it's not moving, it only has potential energy. How much, so how much, um, mechanical energy does it have all together? Well, it had zero over here and it had 588 over here. And so we found out that the total was 588. Now that 588 will not change at all. It, the, the mechanical energy will stay 588. But what will happen is the following. As this object begins to go down the slope, what will happen to this one? Well, what, can, can we agree that its velocity is gonna start going up. You can think of it as its speed. It's gonna start going faster and faster. So that means your kinetic energy will go up. But at the same time, as the object is going down the slope, 
what will happen to its height above the ground? Well, that'll become less. And so what will happen to this energy? Well, that'll go down. So this one goes up, this one goes down, but guess what? The total will be still five and will always be 588. Only in grade 12 will that maybe start changing when we start using friction, but we said it's frictionless. So when there's no friction around, the mechanical energy of an object does not change. Yes, the potential energy can go up and down, and yes, the kinetic energy can go up and down. But if you look at the total, the mechanical energy, that never changes. So that means the mechanical energy at point A is 588. The mechanical energy at point B will also be 588. Obviously, it will have a different kinetic and potential value, but the total will still be 588. And then at point C, same thing, 588 for the mechanical, but maybe the potential will be different and the kinetic will be different. But if you add them together, it'll always be 588. Now, your teacher might give a slightly different um, definition, but pretty much the law of conservation, what does conservation mean? It means that you are protecting something or something is not changing. Um, there's different ways of looking at the word conservation, but it means that you're, not ch you, you're trying to keep it the same. And so mechanical energy stays the same, right? We said it's 588 in this um, particular question. So we, we, what we can say is that the, the mechanical energy of an object in an isolated system. Isolated just means that if something's isolated, it means that it's shut off from the rest of the world. What they mean is if you're just looking at this little box system over here and you don't have any other things coming in like friction, you don't have any of that coming inside. We're just pretending that it's a nice, perfect little world where there's no things like friction, air resistance, all of that. Then we say that the mechanical energy of an object in an isolated system is conserved, meaning it stays the same. This question, calculate the velocity at point B. Now check how easy this is, okay? Have a look at this. What we have said is that the mechanical energy never changes. So what is the mechanical energy at B? Well, there we go, 588, we know that. So we can say that the mechanical energy at B is 588. We don't even have to go do a calculation for that because we know that mechanical energy stays the same everywhere for this object. Now we know that mechanical energy at B is going to be the potential energy at B plus the kinetic energy at B right? Because that's what mechanical energy is. So we can go fill in the formulas now. We know that this one is mgh and this one is half mv squared. Those formulas are given to you on your formula sheet. And so what we can fill in here is 588 because we know that that's what the mechanical energy is. We know the mass of the object is 2. We know gravity is 9.8. We have the height over there is 10. We know the mass of the object once again is two. We don't know the velocity. That's what we're trying to calculate like that. And so you can go and type this on your calculator and you get 196. So we can say 588 equals to 196 plus. Now this you can type on your calculator, just this part here, half multiplied by two, that's one. And so one, I don't need to put a one there because if there's a one there, then it doesn't, you can just leave it out. We know that there's a one there. So now we just solve. So we take the 196 to the left. So we say 588 minus 196, and that'll give us 392 equals to the velocity of B squared. And then to get the to get the velocity of B by itself, you take the square root of 392. And so the velocity of B will be 19, if you round to two decimal places, it'll be 19.80 meters per second. And then this last one says, um, how will the mechanical energy of the cart at point C compare with the mechanical energy at point B? It will be exactly the same. So we're gonna say here, same. Or so they said equal to. So we're gonna say equal to. And then just say mechanical energy is conserved. Mechanical energy is conserved. Remember guys, 
In grade 10, mechanical energy does not change no matter where the object is. All that happens is the potential energy changes and the kinetic energy changes. For example, um, I told you that as you go down here, what will happen to the potential? It'll become less because your height is decreasing. But what will happen to your, your kinetic? It'll go up because you're speeding up. But then when you go from B to C, well now all of a sudden the object's going uphill. So what would happen to its potential energy? Well that will begin to increase again because the height is increasing. But what will happen to the speed? Well if you're going up a hill, your object is gonna start slowing down. So your potential energy would go up, but your kinetic energy would go down. But guess what? Your total will always be 588.